So um, uh, in the last time uh, we talked about the uh, <coughs> About the hypothesis testing, so uh, which is the um, so we we would like to interest in testing on beta zero equal to one versus the beta one is not equal to zero. Sorry, the beta zero equal to zero versus the beta zero is not equal to zero, and then we use the um, the uh, uh, the fact that the beta one has, has uh, follows the normal distribution with mean beta one. And the variance sigma zero divided by some of the x line minus x bar square, and um, also use we use the uh, the some of the uh, error square divided by sigma zero follows a chi square distribution, and then um, uh, we use the um, Uh, fact that uh, uh, so then we have a, a normal distribution with mean zero and one variance one and then the, we have classical distribution with user freedom nu and if they are independent then then uh, the, they are uh, then the normal random variable divided by square root of the chi square random variable divided by its degrees of freedom uh, follows the t distribution distribution with the uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, and in this uh, uh, in this uh, expression, I use the new one here, so it follows the, the t distribution with the new degrees of freedom. And then, <coughs> excuse me. So we can show that the beta one hat minus beta one divided by uh, a standard error beta one hat follows a t distribution with n minus two degrees of freedom. Um, so if you, uh, we, in this case, we are basically interested in beta one is equal to zero or not. So here we, we plug in the beta one equal to zero. Um, so that's the, um, that gives the, the beta one hat divided by standard error beta one hat follows the T distribution with N minus two degrees of freedom. And we reject H zero if the, uh, this uh, statistic, the tested statistic, which I denote as T star, uh, this absolute value of T star uh, greater than T, that T value with N minus two degrees of freedom with the uh, alpha divided by two, uh, 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 two, two, which is the, um, which is the, um, the right tail uh, probability of the, in the T distribution. And so, um, so here is, is the absolute value of t star is greater than t n minus star power divided by two, then we reject the h zero, or you can calculate the p value, and if less than the 0 0.05, then we reject the h zero. Now we have looked at the example, and then the uh, we also looked at the uh, how to construct the constant interval uh, using the distribution that we derived. So we have a t distribution, and then we use the uh, uh, the t value. So we have a constant interval uh, for for the lower bound is the uh, the beta one hat minus standard error of beta hat times the, the t value. And then the upper bound is beta one hat plus the standard error of the beta one hat times the, the t value. So that's the upper bound. And then we look at the example. And then we um, look at the how to uh, fit this uh, uh, linear uh, regression model uh, by using. So we have the so um, we use the, the function at n on here. Um, so then we uh, uh, write down the our outcome variable on this um,
our convertible in here on 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 the on the first and then we use this, this tilde and write down the predictors and then so and then we have on one predictor we have x we write x on here and then the linear model y to the x is the, so and then you we store the model on this bit and then this summary our uh, function gives a nice thing summary of the of the model uh, so it gives the first the final number summaries uh, uh, for residuals and it gives the coefficient so this estimate is the um, the estimate of, uh, of the from the least square estimate estimate so is interested minus 5.81 and then the um the coefficient is the uh, 2.54 and then we have standard error of beta 0 and beta 1 and the t value is the uh the, the test statistic for beta 0 equal to 0 and beta 1 equal to 0 and then the this uh, the last column uh, shows the the um the p-value um, uh, based on this, 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 this the t-value here. And then you can also uh, check that the, um, the s has the uh, uh, 13 degrees of freedom with 1.771. And then you can check the detailed information by using this names function. It has a coefficient, residuals, then df residual, and then and etc and then the and one of the important information is the coefficients so you can print actually print out this coefficient for coefficient only uh, by using the base dollar as coefficients so that's what we covered in the last time and then any questions No. Okay, so we are going to move on to the, the fitted values. So by plugging the uh, x equal to the little x, so we can actually find the fitted value under the line. So this field value is the is basically if you have the here and then you fit this is um there's the linear regression. If it's a linear regression line, and then for each x value or each value on here, you can um, you can think of the um, the uh, predicted um, or fitted value based on your model. So this fitted value can be your uh, prediction uh, when you have the uh, observations on, if you assume that you have observations in here. So this um, fitted value is also, uh, as, you, as we discussed, it's a, it's a random variable uh, because the, um, it is the, it is the, um, It is also the function of this beta zero hat and beta one hat. So this is the um, 
this is the uh, this this is also the random variable. So you can uh, so this fitted value, the expected of the fitted value is the easy to easy to derive uh, because the expectation of this y hat x is the um, beta zero plus beta one x uh, because the beta zero and beta one hat they are the unbiased estimator. And then the, the one of the most important um, element is the variance of the y hat. And there's a variance of the y hat x is the uh, variance of beta zero hat plus beta one hat x, which is equal to the uh, beta zero variance of beta zero hat plus the x squared times the variance of beta one hat plus two times the x covariance of beta zero and beta one beta zero hat and beta one hat. Here, the, the key thing is that this beta zero hat, beta one hat, is, they are not independent. So if you remember, um, if you have any random variable, V and W, variance of the uh, V plus W is variance of V plus variance of W plus two times the covariance of uh, V and W. So here we have X, which we treat as a constant. So this is going to be variance of beta zero hat plus X square of beta variance of beta one hat plus uh, two times uh, Covariance of beta zero hat and beta one x times beta one hat, and then you can pull if the constant in front of the covariance. So it's going to be two times x times the covariance of beta zero hat and beta one hat. And then you have you can, if you calculate this one then um, so I mean this is the this uh, this beta zero derivation variance of the beta zero hat has the the, the, the homework problem um, so this kind of one over n plus the x bar squared divided by the sum of x i by x bar square and the variance of beta one hat is the uh, one over uh, uh, schema squared divided by uh, sum of the x i minus x bar square. Um, so we, then we have x squared, and here we, if you pull out this muscle in front of the all the function, uh, all the expressions, then we only have x squared. And then minus the, uh, this is also homework problem um, in the homework one. Uh, so the, the two times x times x bar divided by sigma zero i equals one to n, the x times x squared. And then if you rearrange this term, then you can get the sigma squared times one over n plus the uh, x bar minus x squared divided by uh, sum of the x i minus x squared. So this last term is the, uh, uh, the hour variance term. Any questions about the derivation? I have a question. Um, um, sorry if this sounds dumb, but um, how do you know when when you um when you group the the three terms, the numerators? Like, how do you know that the x bar is the negative one and not the x? From the x when you group when you put them inside the binomial square. You mean this one? Which expression are you talking about? 
like the from the last one from the second to last to the last one and then you you combine like the x bar square plus x square minus 2x x bar um like how do we know if if the x bar is negative or not the x ah so this is the uh So this is just the expression of quadratic equation. So quadratic equation. So so you have the here the x the bar. Or it doesn't it doesn't matter which one is the negative one. Um, that's what Denise just typed on the chat box. Oh yeah, uh, here. Okay, so that's a good question. Um, here, it doesn't matter for mathematically. So, what the is basically uh, so basically we would like to see the um, how the uh, x is is from the x bar so we can we can fix this x is changing this x bar is not changed this capital x bar does not change so this x so i mean in math it doesn't matter whether you can see so you can use this x bar minus x square or x little x minus x bar square that maybe doesn't matter it does not affect the calculation of the variance so, but the I just use this expression. I mean, because I would, I would like to see how the x deviates from the x bar, and how the variance changes when x deviates from x bar. So, I mean, you, it doesn't matter whether you can just x capture x bar minus x little x squared. Okay, thank you, doctor. So here. The standard error of the y hat axis, the so remember the we know that the unbiased s major for sigma square is the s square. Uh, so if so the variance estimated variance is going to be s square times one over n plus the x minus x bar sigma square divided by sum of the x bar minus x bar square. So when we you take this square root on here, this kind of s times square root of 1 over n plus the x bar, little x bar minus x bar square divided by sigma squared i equals 1 to n x bar minus x bar square. So this is the uh, so fitted value. Uh, variance of the fitted, uh, fitted uh, value, sorry, the standard error of the fitted value y hat. X. And then you can see that this y bar, variance of y bar is the sigma squared divided by n, right? So the question is the, let me ask you one question. Is the This is the variance of hat by hat x is the is the greater or smaller 
dan juga yang sobat. So my question is, is the usually variance of y hat greater or smaller than the uh, variance of y, uh, y the sample mean of y? Okay, we have one answer, and then okay, I got the second answer, and then anyone else? Okay, does everyone agree with that the y hat is the y x as usually a larger variance than y bar? Okay, now that's very good. Yes, so the hat, the fitted value always has usually a larger variance than the um, y bar because the you can see that we have a additional term. This uh, for the variance. So this x, 0 x minus x bar square divided by sum of x bar, x bar minus x bar square is the additional term um, for the for the y the variance of y hat x. So this sigma, this this first term, this the sigma square divided by n is just the so this is the variance of the y bar. So 
and this is the square quantity, so this is the always positive. So this variance of y hat x is greater than usually greater than this variance of y bar y bar, and they are the same if and only if the um, little x is equal to x bar. So variance of the as the variance of the y bar is when only if x, x is with x bar so which is when we calculate um, fitted value uh, on the little this x is equal to x bar um, um, which gives the y hat uh, at, at y x that case at y x is the y bar. because the, the third value when x is equal to x bar is the beta zero hat plus beta one hat times x bar, which gives the y bar. Is everything okay? So in that's the case, the uh, so so you can see that if x is the deviate large from the x bar. Let's say your x bar is the say five, but the, you have the you want to get a fitted value on x equal to one hundred, then your variance would be very large. So here, the large variability means that your fitted value can be changed a lot. So the regression line is the best estimated at the average of the predictor. So it means that little x is equal to x bar. So this goes goes away. Yeah, you're then so you have you have a fitted value of, of for the y bar. A fitted value staying the same as y bar. And that's the smallest variance uh, on this fitted value. So then you can see that the regression line is the um, estimated uh, best on the on the average value of the predictor, which is x bar. And the poorly estimated for the extreme value of predictor. As I said, if little x is the say 100 and your x sample mean of the x, the predictor is the 5, then you have very large variability for the fitted value. So, I mean, they, if you have large variability, then your uh, estimate is very unstable. Uh, so, um, it could be the poorly estimated. Then the 95% uh, confidence for mean response when this x i with the little x is the um, again we use the um, t use the t distribution um, so the this we have a y hat x minus the um, expectation of y hat x is divided by the standard error of y hat x follows the t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. 
So the, the, the 95% constant interval for mean response when x i equal to x is the y hat x minus the t value times the standard error of the y hat x, that's the lower bound. And the upper bound is the y hat x plus the t value times standard value of the error of y hat x. And then if the simple linear, linear regression holds, then uh, the VR are 100 minus times 1 minus alpha percent constant that is true value of the, uh, I mean, true value, which is the this expectation of y hat, y i minus x i minus x is located within this interval. And then this is the, um, in fact, this is the point-wise interval. So for one, for one point, this is the value 95, 95 for the constant interval, but you have a multiple values of x, then this may not be, may not be the, um, the uh, 90, uh, 95% the constant. And then we are gonna talk about later about the how to create the 95% um, um, uh, constant interval for multiple values of the x. But here, for a single value of the uh, this, for the x, the single value of little x, then you can see that the, the this is constant interval is the it is the value ninety five percent constant. Any question? Yes, no. Uh, hi, Dr. Cho. So um, this is this question is uh, regarding a little bit of uh, last lecture and right now um, you mentioned uh, you you had to recall the uh, independence between sample mean and sample variance, right? Yes. Um, and I mean. Uh, I guess like in two dimensions, like it makes sense that the um, linear model the is uh, the va the variance is reduced best when the when the model passes through the the sample mean, right? Because I mean, well, that's where majority of the points are. Yes, yeah. but, but 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 in the case where we have a more complicated model like not just two variables, uh, why is it that the sample mean reduces the variability if, if we talked about the independence between um, the sample mean and the sample variance? Okay, so, so, so you are talking about the sample mean and sample variance are independent, but the, so but the why the sample mean affects the variance of the y hat? Is that that, is that what you're yes. asking? Yes, like why does it reduce the variability? Oh, oh, here. The independence of sample mean and sample variance is only uh, holds for, for one random variable. So here, we have the, here we have a variance of the y hat, and then this x is not the, This is x is the, so x bar is the, not the random. Is it okay? So your x bar is not the random. So when we talk about the sample, independent of, of the sample mean and sample variance, that's only for the, um, for one random variable, the uh, IID random variable for one sample k. But here we have a y hat which is the random variable. And then this random variable has a, this has the variance has a two components, which is one over n plus the x minus x bar square and then xi minus x bar square. Now this second term is the treated as constant. So this is like, if you have, uh, 
your you have a variance of the expectation um, of let's say if you remember the So it's in it analogous to this one. So if you have this, you want to minimize <coughs> expectation of x minus a square. Then a, then this quantity is minimized. When a is equal to uh, a u, which is the expected value of x. I mean, it's not a perfect um, match, but you can see that here the x x bar is the like a constant you can do treat it as constant here and then when this little x equals equal to large x bar then this term goes this this additional term goes away so we have a minimum variance of the variance of y bar on here and then we talked about the independence of variance and the sample sample variance and sample mean that's for the like a the uh, IID random variable. So here we are not talking about this. We are not uh, talking about that 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 uh, that content. Okay, Raul, is, is it clear? Uh, yes, that makes sense. Thank you, Dr. Cho. Any questions? Okay, so now um, we have a slight different situation, which is the, we have a new observation, Y star. So Y star, we have a new observation, the Y star. Um, uh, based on this, uh, which is the at, uh, new, uh, so we have new outcome, future outcome, I would say. Then that's uh, based on the uh, our the new uh, uh, future predictor x star. Say. And we have this. Then assuming that five star is independent of the um, data that we use for model. Okay, I mean, if I say this um, um, here, 
So we have a data. We first have a data. Let me use this one. Let's say we have a data. We have data. So we have XI, YI. And we can have the We estimate theta zero and theta one. So we have a, a model. And then now we have a new observation based on X star and then um, Y star. And then this new observation is like independent with the your original uh, data. So, so like this. So suppose that you have the you have the you want to um, look at the uh, regression fit data. Want to see the model for uh, GPA of the youth students as the outcome, and then the uh, say the sleeping time as the um, youth students sleeping time as the predictor. So you collect the data, and then you use that data as this data, and then fit the model. So fit the model uh, for, um, let's say you are flipping your the, uh, GPA equal to, say, uh, you get the number say minus the let's say you can get the sorry you can get the zero point five minus the zero point let's say uh, seven GP as a sorry not the GP to my point flipping point let's say S and then you get the uh, new observations. Uh, on the on the based on the uh, y star, which is which is this. So you get a new. Suppose that you get to say in the next year you get a new student, new students, and then they have they have the new information of sleeping time and GPA, right? And then we would like to see how this uh, model well predicts um, with this the um, new well predicts the new observations based on uh, based on the our model that we made. And then here the issue is that the this y star minus the uh, the predicted the um, response based on the new observations. This is our interest because this shows the our accuracy of the predict the um, the prediction. If this uh, has the um, very large prediction, then it would be uh, your prediction. It means that prediction would be very poor. If this has a small variance, then the, its prediction is very accurate. Is this clear? 
so the this is a little bit different from the what we had before. So what we had before is this. So we only have the x, and then we just uh, want to look at the uh, our the fitted values, the uh, inference for the for the say the fitted value. Here we have the new new observation. Why? I mean the new observation for the I mean for both an outcome and then the predictor. Then we would like to see how we precisely uh, uh, predict our new uh, observations by looking at the difference between the um, the new observation, a new outcome, uh, outcome, new outcome, y star, and then fit in value based on the new uh, value uh, in the the predictor. Uh, is it okay? Yes. Is this clear? So here we have this the we are interested in y star minus y hat x star. And then here we we can see that the um uh, uh this expectation is equal to zero uh for um Y star minus Y hat star and star X. The variation, the variance is the, uh, the uh, Y star minus Y hat X star is the here. We assume that this Y star is independent uh, with the, um, the variance of Y hat X star. So by using the rule in the independence in the uh, two, uh, Random variable um, in the variance, so it's going to be y variance of y star plus the variance of y hat x star, and then this variance of y hat x star is the what we just have derived. And then we have a, a one more uh, term, which is the variance from this y star. So this this is going to be so it's sigma square one plus one over n plus x star minus x bar square divided by x star by about x i minus x bar square, and then also the standard error of this prediction is so uh, by taking a square root of this variance term uh, formula and then replace this, this sigma by s, you can get the standard error of the prediction, which is the uh, uh, prediction error for the new observation, and then the uh, the ninety five percent finish interval for the future response is the uh, Use the uh, predicted value uh, with a new uh, pr uh, predictor value. And we have use the key, uh, uh, key, uh, key values, and then the we use the, the standard error of this prediction. And we have lower bound so minus the key value, and the upper bound is the plus key value. 
So that's a 95% prediction interval for the future. And then let's uh, look at the uh, example um, from um, by using the uh, last example. Um, so, sorry to interrupt, Dr. Cho, but um, hey, Paul, I think your mic is on. Can you say it again? So, uh, it's I think Paul's mic is on and, and it's causing a lot of static. Okay. Could you turn off the radio? If your radio is, your mic is on, could you turn off? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And um, so, I mean, I mean, again, let's okay. Let me explain again. So we are interested in this this uh, obtaining interval D for y star minus y hat x star. So this prediction interval, uh, this prediction interval should contain the uh, about the standard error of the prediction. And that standard error of prediction is the uh, since the uh, we are are we use the single uh, observations for the for the prediction. So we have another. Uh, we add the variability for the uh, for the uh, single observation, and then we can obtain the ninety five percent prediction interval for the future response based on this the standard error of this prediction, and then the fitted value of based on this future uh, predictor value. Okay, so let's uh, look, look at the example. Um, Okay, can you see my R console? Yes, we can. Can you see my R console in here? Yes, doctor. Okay. So, So we have the, we look at that this, we have data and we look at this um, example in the last time. And then now we assume that the, we have the x equals to 14. So, so we like to look at the uh, constant interval for a faded value. And and then the um, here so we have the we can calculate this fitted value 
and we compute this the uh, the sum of the uh, x i minus x i square, and then we can calculate this the um, uh, residual standard er residual standard error, and then we calculate this uh, um, standard error for the y hat, which is fitted value, and then we calculate this Compton interval by the, uh, by calculating the lower bound and, and upper bound. So this y hat minus this qt means the uh, uh, the quantile uh, the quantile value uh, for the t distribution. So for quantile value for the here I put the zero point nine seven five because the uh, so so here this the zero point when we usually say zero point zero two five then for that's for the we consider the right tail probability. So the left tail prob left probability is the 0 0.975. So in the R, we use this 9.0.975 for finding this the T value. And the standard error of the y hat, and then, then for upper upper bound, we add this the um, uh, this quartile value with the standard error of y hat. And if you run this one. So you can get the uh, prediction in, uh, for the interval. Uh, so the lower bound is the 28.75 and the upper bound is 30.79. And then now let's look at the, um, let's consider this y x0 as a future uh, value and then we can, can calculate the prediction interval. So this prediction interval of the standard error is we add one here for this calculation based on the formula. Uh, so we can, and then we calculate this lower and upper bound of the prediction. Then you can do by using this one that you can get the uh, lower bound for the prediction, the upper bound for the prediction, and then you can see that the um, Lower bound, this the interval is wider. This prediction interval is wider than the uh, as the uh, interval for the uh, fitted value. You can do you do the prediction by uh, just by using this predict function. So this predict function is the very widely used. Um, not only this the linear uh, this uh, linear regression, but also generalized linear model for and for any model. Uh, uh, in the statistics, uh, in the R. So this predict function, you, if you look at this predict, so when you want to find this uh, prediction uh, for uh, for the help node for the, this, pre this predict function, if you just write down this predict, then it's very, because this prediction is very general, so it, it does not very helpful for you. Uh, for about this uh, prediction function. So for this linear model, if you want to know this the prediction specific for, uh, which is specific for the, uh, the linear model, uh, you, you need to use a predict and it shows the uh, uh, prediction method for the, for the, uh, for the, uh, the linear regression. So it has basically uh, several um, arguments, but the basic argument is this object, which is the model, it, the new data, which is the, uh, the you want to calculate that, that the one that you want to put input. Uh, and then for well, this case we have interval so this you can specify constants this this is for the, the fitted value the prediction this is for the uh, prediction value so 
you run this the predict with the constant and the prediction h, then it gives the fitted value. Basically, the fitted value are the same, but the constant, the fitted the interval for the prediction as a uh, the constant, the fitted value, sorry, the interval for the fitted value, and then interval for the prediction that are different. And then they are the exactly the same what uh, we have done manually. So you can use the predict predict function to calculate this uh, 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 constant interval for fitted value and the prediction uh, value. Any question? The prediction so the, 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 the here the remark the prediction interval is wider because the prediction interval tries to capture the uh, future inter observation, whereas the constant the, the constant interval for fitted value attempts to capture its mean. And then the inference for prediction requires a normality because it pertains a single observation. So I think the, the second one. I think you know the first one very clearly by comparing the constant interval for the fitted value and then the prediction interval. But the second one is especially important because if you want to do this prediction interval, because it has a single observation, and then that single observation is the random. So it so if you want to do a correct inference. Then it this it requires your data it requires the normality of the data. I mean, for theoretical results, normality is required. But in usual, like in practice, if you want to just care about the um, uh, like like estimator of beta zero and beta one, and if you want to look at the inference of beta one, normality is important but it's not that very important so if you have like your data is like even from even from normality uh, intermediate in the intermediate degree not so harsh then because we have the large sample theory the so-called large sample theory I mean one of the example large sample theory is the sensory material so you have a have this uh, large sample theory so that if your sample size is very large, then if your data is the is not deviating from the normality not so much, then your estimator, your beta hat one, like has the approximately normal distribution. So this uh, normality is important, but the, that importance is not very high if you are just interested in the um, 
uh, influence for the beta one half, and then you just care about the fitted value. However, if you want to care, you want to, you want the interest in the like a prediction, and then think about the inference, consider the inference of the prediction. Then, since as you look at this formula, this y hat is also the random variable. So we are like we like the we call this y hat should be normally distributed. That makes this the uh, p distribution value. If y hat is the non-normal, then this we cannot use this uh, uh, p distribution result based on this the uh, y hat minus y y star minus minus y hat x star by by standard error of the prediction. So since this y hat is the y star y star is the random variable, so for inference for the prediction, the normality is very important. Any questions? Okay, then let's move on to the next topic. So as we saw, we uh, talked about the um, hypothesis testing and then the Thompson interval for beta one half, and then we talked about the um, the Thompson interval and then and then for the prediction interval uh, the last time, and then now we will I would like to see. Um, the decomposition, so the analysis of variance. So here we, the, the main issue is that we would like to evaluate the uh, our model fit, uh, with and then this can be explained by the variability of the uh, variability. So here, the variability means that how much change of, of the from the sample mean, uh, the change from the uh, observation from the sample mean of the y is explained by the model. 
So here, then you have there, then you have just the uh, data, data here, say you have the say data, oh, here's y1 to y n, the, We are in the uh, most the uh, usual um, estimator is the oh, the sample mean, right? When you have just a, you just let's say you just have the data, and then. Let someone ask you that the okay. So what's the best? Uh, what's the what's the summary statistic for this data? Then you one of the typical choices is the uh, sample mean, right? And then you can also present the sample variance. Based on y bar and data to show uh, the variability of the data. So the sample variance explains how your data spread Or your how data is the change it, how data changes from your the sample mean. So far so good. And then um, now you have a uh, predictor x, xr. And then, okay, the, the border, so you now you have a linear reverse sale. And then we, you, because you build this model because the, your model will um, explains the association between the predictor and then response. So you build up, say you have model, you estimate this beta zero, and beta one. So now you have one to extend. And also obtain at so if to be um, your model uh, and for your model to be useful uh, your model should explain Availability of of the of your the the the, the y i um, very well, right? So you build a model, and then your your model, if your model, and then you have a fitness value, if your fitness value has the explains. Uh, or uh, data pretty very well, which is the 
if your difference is beta basic from your fitted value and then your sample mean is very large, then um, your model explains the um, your model is useful because the it means that the variability from y from the y's I are captured by uh, variability of the y i uh, is captured by your model. I mean the fitted fit value. And that's the case. Uh, your variability between original observation and then your fitted value should be very small because variability from your model is almost captured by your model. Again, your if your if your model captures the variability of the y, which is the based on the sample mean of y. then the, your model is very useful. And then that leaves the statistical significance of the, your, uh, um, your flow in this case, because we only have the um, one Okay. Okay, any questions? If you, do you have any other questions? So if you, uh, if you do not have any questions, let me stop here. And then remember that the homework due is the tomorrow 1.30 p.m. So don't be late for homework submission. And I have office hour tomorrow, 10, 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So if you have a, a, a final question for the homework or other things, then you can um, visit my office, the virtual office hour. Thank you. And I have a uh, uh, nice rest of the week, and I will meet you uh, uh, 